Uh, thanks everybody for joining us. My name is Dan Garfield. I uh, am uh, basically the chief evangelist here at CodeFresh, um, which is a very critical, important project, uh, which Chart Museum is a critical and important project for us uh, on the open source side and something that we've been investing heavily in. Um, I am very happy to welcome our presenters today, Josh Jelitsky, who is the founder of Chart Museum and also a uh, software engineer here at CodeFresh, as well as Steph Arnold, the senior uh, senior software engineer at uh, SUSE, working on uh, Kubernetes and the um, CAS platform over there. So uh, with that being said, just a few housekeeping items. We do have the Q&A button. So as we go through, feel free to ask questions and make comments in there. And we will uh, try to address those either during the presentation or afterwards during a Q&A session. Um, this is being broadcast on Facebook as well. So feel free to uh, send that link to any of your colleagues that'd like to join. We appreciate feedback. We appreciate social media engagement. Those things help us know that this kind of broadcast is worthwhile and that um, we should keep doing it. So with that being said uh, and introducing our uh, presenters, I will let uh, Josh and Stephanie take it from there and uh, we can jump right into the outline. All right. All right. Uh, thanks, Dan and Josh, uh, for having me here. I guess um, I'll kick this off. Um, welcome again, and uh, I'm excited to be here. So today we're going to talk about Helm and Chart Museum. Um, we're going to talk about Helm first, uh, just because it's kind of the basis, um, you know, where Chart Museum came from. Won't spend too much time on that, though. Um, then we'll talk about Chart Museum itself and how it works and why it solves um, uh, well, how and why it solves all the problems that we have with uh, uh, sharing these charts between each other. Um, and then we're going to jump into the good stuff, uh, code fresh and how we're going to do CI CD, um, working with a live cluster. Um, and so let's just jump into Helm. All right, so uh, what is Helm? Um, it is essentially a package manager uh, for Kubernetes. Uh, just like uh, NPM, uh, YUM, all of these things, they, um, they manage kind of two parts of the system. They have the packages themselves, uh, as well as their dependencies. Um, so it manages what is available to you on your system. And then it also manages the install part. Uh, so uh, they can handle uh, making sure that your system actually has the dependencies, um, and as well as removing packages. Um, Helm does the same thing. Um, with the added uh, templating function. Uh, so with Kubernetes manifests are uh, the files that are used to describe a deployment on top of Kubernetes. Uh, Helm takes those manifests and turns them into more of a templatized version to allow for more uh, flexible and in a sense easier to read deployments, uh, especially in terms of dependencies. And these are referred to as charts. Um, and okay, so back to what we use Helm for, um, just its packages and installation. Um, and Helm itself is a little bit different than some because there are two parts to it. Because Helm is designed to be used externally to your cluster as well as within if you choose. So there are actually two parts. There's a client and a server. And the server component is called Tiller. Um, so here I just have a couple of commands that you can use client side only in the event that you are authoring charts, but you're not necessarily deploying to um, say a production cluster, like maybe you have Minikube or something, but um, you can run things like fetching packages, searching, uh, linting, and of course creating the package without having a cluster. Um, and then the various uh, operations type uh, commands, as I like to call them, uh, installation and listing, uh, like what's currently installed in your cluster. Uh, these are the ones that make use of Tiller. Uh, so that's kind of Helm in a nutshell. So the thing is now we're left kind of in the middle, the packages. Where do they come from? We're grabbing them from somewhere, we're packaging them and they need to go somewhere. And now and then even how Helm manages repositories, because they can come from anywhere. They can come from any uh, web, web endpoint, and Helm can manage many. And the way that it does that 
is uh, an internally managed uh, YAML file, which um, basically points to each endpoint, um, uh, each ref, if you will, um, and it will tell you what versions of which package are available. So how do we handle these packages? 